Hello and welcome to Build a Skill. In this session, we're going to look at spelling revision. Uh, now, most of us, we can either spell or we can't spell too good. All right. Now, the idea of this session is to just make you think of again about your spelling regime and how you can look to certain areas to help you improve it. So let's get started. OK, so let's get started uh, going professional. You will need to be accurate with spelling in your writing exam to get marks. Now, in this presentation, we'll leave you feeling a bit more comfortable about spelling trickier words. All right, there are some rules that will help you remember these also. So let's have a look. So one, the I before E rule. You may remember this from your school days. OK, in many words, the two vowels I and D e, are next to each other. But how do you know which letter comes first? OK, by using this rule, I before E, you should be able to spell these words collect correctly. So the full rule is I before E except after C. All right, so let's have a look. All right, so I before E except after C, but only when it rhymes with B. I want you to have a look at this diagram and look at the words and how they're spelt within it and the use of the E and the I. Now remember, uh, I before E except after C. And you can see in that red area there's some exceptions. OK, so let's have a look. All right, so the left-handed circle are words that follow the I before E rule except after C. And the E letters come after the C rhyming with B. Deceit, receive receipt ceiling so you can see it rhymes with b in the right hand circle are words that follow the i before e except after c rule well you can see the i and the e, i and the e do not come after the letter c so you can see you see words like field cashier achieve tier and they don't have that letter c preceding them so the i comes first but there are there's some are rule breakers and don't follow these rules these are called exceptions. So look out for these exceptions. It's things like uh, C's, fancies, protein, caffeine. Therefore, in the middle circle are words that don't follow the rule, even after the C and rhyming B. So be careful when dealing with uh, uh, I and D. Look at some commonly misspelt words. Some words are difficult to spell as a, they either contain silent letters. And you can see there, for example, climb, handsome, echo, Christmas, right. And this can be particularly difficult if, if English is not your first language. All right. So you have to uh, remember that these have silent words, uh, letters in the word. Double letters, for example, tomorrow, button, degree, common, cocoon. All right, and again, they become a bit more difficult when the words or the, the the words become a little bit more trickier, trickier, like necessary. How many C's? How many S's? So it can get confusing. But there is techniques you can learn to get over that hurdle. Now, letters that sound different to what it actually is. For example, describe, business. All right, so describe is pronounced D-I. Describe, okay, but it's spelt with an E. And business. The U sounds like an I, but it's uh, spelt with a U. OK, so these are uh, things you have to look out for as well. Irregular spacing. All right. For example, uh, maybe uh, and not to be confused with maybe. All right. Uh, thank you. Not to be confused with thank you. So you must know how to use these properly. OK. All right. And. You may also need to be able to spell specialist words correctly. However, these can be tricky as they also contain double letters, silent letters and lots of other letters. So it could be a combination of, of some of the, the problems you've seen on the last slide. All right. So specialist words are words that are specific to a particular field. You may have heard them being used in everyday life from different jobs. OK, and remember the scenarios you can get in your exam can be from different walks of life. So, for example, if it's a hairdresser scenario, you may hear the words like low lights, straighteners and mouse or moose. OK, and retail, you may hear the words like backlog, merchandising, purchase. 
All right, and in business, you may hear words like apprentice, competitor, recruitment. So you can see some of these words have got double letters. Some of them have got silent words. Some of them are using words that are sound different from how they're spelled. So you have to be careful. OK, let's look at hyphenated words. OK, hyphens are used to join two words together. So the word or a phrase is clearer to the reader. All right. It shows the reader that the two words should be treated as just one word. All right. Hyphens create compound words. This is joining two words together to make one word to show that it has a joint meaning. All right. Now, compound words are created by joining together two or more words, which make sense on their own. So, for example, all right, the man with the glasses is short sighted. And you can see these two words together mean something. But when you join them together, they mean something else. OK, short sighted, a good example. Right, so hyphens can also be used to separate the same vowels from being next to each other. This makes the word easier to read and pronounce. For example, re-enter, anti-icing, semi-invalid. So you can see you're splitting up the words, OK? The man re-entered the shop after forgetting his wallet. However, if two different vowels are next to each other, a hyphen is not needed. All right, so if it's two vowels together, you don't need it. So for example, for example, semi-automatic. And you can see here that these joining words, semi is a separate word from automatic, because they're two vowels, you don't need a hyphen. OK, and you can see there in the sentence, the woman was driving a semi-automatic car. So that's how you remember. Okay, here's some tips for helping you remember how to spell. OK, it may help you to invent funny sentences to remember how to spell tricky words. All right, for example, necessary. This is a great one for forgetting and making, making uh, mistakes with. And you can see you can remember how to spell that by remembering the little saying one coffee and two sugars. The way I would remember it is one collar and two sleeves, if you're referring to a shirt. So there's different ways you can remember how to spell things. And once you get that in your head, you'll never get it wrong again. OK, or make it into a mnemonic by taking the first letter of each and making it catchy. OK, for example, be because elephants can always understand small elephants. And if you remember that little mnemonic, it spells the word because big elephants can always understand small elephants. So if you have a word that you particularly have a problem spelling, use a little mnemonic, make it up yourself. It's easy to do. Right, let's look at commonly confused words. Now, some words may be easily confused as they sound the same, but have different meanings and functions. And these are known as homophones. OK, there's the word there. OK, in other words, belongs to them. For example, their house was really clean. That house belongs to them. OK, but there's another word there. OK, and if you remember your a punctuation session when we did apostrophes, if you're not too sure if that's the correct there to use, expand it back out. Right. So you can see here the shortened version of they are. Uh, they're playing sports after school. And if you want to check if that's the correct there to use, Extend it back out to they are. They are playing sports after school. And you can see it does make sense. So it needs an apostrophe. All right. It's not this one and it's not the other one. OK. So again, extend it out. Now, I'll show you what it means, right? There's another one there, right? That just means talking about a location over there. Put it over there. Your cup of tea is over there, right? Now, again, these get mixed up. So if you're not sure if that needs an apostrophe or not, Extend it back out to the two words, they are, and you'll see that it doesn't make sense. Your cup of tea is over, there are, and you can see it doesn't make sense. So this is the version of there you use, okay? And introducing sentences, all right? There must be another way, okay? So it's either over there or there must be another way, okay, when you're introducing a sentencing, a sentence. So this is these are homophones. All right. And that's how you check if you're using them in a valid sentence. Here's some more examples. The word to, 
all right, towards, for example, uh, she is going to France. So you're going towards France, going to France, nice and short. Okay, part of a verb, she's going to paint a picture. All right, nice and short and succinct. Now here's another word that sounds the same, but means different. Okay, again, they're called homophones. Too much of something. For example, you're too strict with my daughter. Another way to think it is also, that sort of a helps get it in your head as well. Too much of something. Okay, another word for saying also. He's coming along too, also. So that's when you add that double zero. All right, so don't get confused with that. Another one is your. All right, okay. And you can see there a shortened version of you are. You're my best friend. All right, and your. Okay, in other words, belonging to you. Your T-shirt is in the wash machine. And again, if you remember your apostrophes, if you're not sure if this needs an apostrophe or not, extend it back out. And it would say you our t-shirt in the washing machine it doesn't make sense does it so therefore you wouldn't put an apostrophe in it's just your all right but again if you extend that one out you are my best friend it does make sense so it does need an apostrophe remember these are emissive apostrophes be careful here are some more examples off you can see that in other words not on if it's not on it must be off get off the grass okay and the word of, all right, pronounced O-V, of. Okay, joins elements of a sentence together. I am full of carrot cake, all right? Now, this, these two can get confused fairly easily, especially when it comes to things like maths questions. Some people say, what is 20% of 30? And you would use that one because you want to find out what 20% of 30 is. But the question might say 20% of 30, which is a totally different thing. All right, so again, between these two, you have to be careful. All right, are the verb, we are the best people for the job. Okay, all right, and our, okay, another word belonging to us, that is our cousin is coming over. So these are words are and our, sound the same, but they have two different meanings when you're, well, they're spelt different for a start, but two different meanings when you see them written down in the written word. Okay. Plurals. In order to make words plural, you would typically add on an S at the end, okay? So things like sheets, computers, hands, okay? However, words that end with a CH or an X or an S or an SH or a Z, okay, they need an ES to make them plural. You can't just tag on an S. You've got to have ES, all right? So things like speeches, fizzes, or bosses, okay? This is also different for words ending in Y. Okay, so if you get a word ending in Y uh, and it's a bill just before it, the plural of these would, would, would just be S. All right, so if a word ends with a Y and it has a consonant just before it, then the Y becomes I-E-S. All right, so be careful with that. In other words, fly goes to flies. So if it ends with a consonant, you can see there L-Y, -L all right, Change that Y to I-E-S. Again, practice makes perfect. Well, some words don't follow any pattern at all, and you have to watch out for these. Again, it can be quite difficult for people whose English is not their first language to learn this sort of stuff. And you can see some examples there. One foot becomes two feet. One person becomes two people. One mouse becomes two mice. And a goose becomes three geese. So you can see it's spelt differently and pronounced differently okay right some don't even change all right one sheep become two sheep news is news one salmon two salmon three salmon that sort of thing so some don't even change it just depends on the context so be aware of that now let's look at prefixes the prefix is a process of adding a letter to the start of the word in other words the prefix is fixing the word in order to change the meaning all right, so let's look at an example. Now you can see there uh, the word secure. If you add IN to the front, it, it becomes insecure. So it's the opposite. Agree, adding dis to the front becomes disagree. Again, you can see how it changes the, the meaning of the word. And IL to the word legal means it becomes illegal. Okay, so you'll notice how it changes the meaning of the word, but doesn't change the spelling. 
Okay. Now, some other prefix, prefixes you may encounter include UN, RE, SEMI, DE, EN, MIS. These are uh, prefixes you can add to word to change the meaning. Okay. Unheard, uh, reset, semi automatic, decide, engulf, mistake. Okay. So these are uh, words you can add to the front of a word to change the meaning. All right. Now let's have a look at something called suffixes. Now, a suffix differ from a prefix in a couple of ways, okay? Now, a suffix is added at the end of a word, okay? And a suffix may also change the meaning and the spelling of a word, all right? Not just the meaning, but the spelling, all right? For example, okay, argue plus men means argument, all right? So, argue is the root word, the men is the suffix, and you can change that word to argument, all right? Heavy plus ness is heaviness. Okay, inactive plus ITY is an inactivity. Okay, but notice how it changed the spelling and the meaning of the word. All right, so that is a suffix. Here are some other suffix you may encounter, include, and you can use them in your written work. Something full, LY, LS, ABLE, ING, ISM. Okay, so try and think, pause the video and think of some words that you could proceed these letters to make another word. Give it a go. All right. However, remember the I before the E rule. Uh, this doesn't apply for suffixes, so ignore it. So build a skill with me, Bill Haining, spelling revision. So thank you very much. And I hope that helped.